so forth. Yeah. I don't want to say for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's certain areas that we have to be concerned about security as well as safety. I mean, so those are two things that we're working with. And Eagle has, you know, has, has talked to us also. The state of Michigan has certain requirements regarding those water tanks, water towers, things like that. So okay. that's what we're working on and trying to, because the view of it from coming down um, Dorothy Street, I mean, they have that having that barbed wire just is, is not a good look but we if you don't have that you have to raise the fence therefore additional cost for that but the black fencing is definitely one of the alternatives that we were looking at as well okay thanks all right we'll move on to the budget this evening does anyone have anything on the budget councilmember kurtzwell go ahead yes i had a uh, question for uh, the city manager <clears throat> i was reading your report and I noticed that uh, in an upcoming meeting, you're going to be bringing back the water, sewer, tap, fee, usage policy. Will we have that policy like at the next meeting? I'll be working uh, with the um, city attorney regarding that. So okay. when it's the next meeting, I don't know the exact date, but we will have that. For okay, you. so we will have that policy. We will have had an opportunity to debate that policy. We will have an opportunity to either approve or modify that policy prior to the adoption of the budget on May 24th. I'll work with the attorney on that. There's no correlation between the two. Right. Well, so either the specific date, whether one happens before the other one happens, but I'll be working with her just like we were working also on the um, unsolicited material ordinance. It's just that we were working on so many other items. Those, those two things were just kind of pushed back a little bit. Well, for me, that policy is kind of important because that does discuss revenue. So it's a revenue component to the budget. It's, it's how you are going to move funds that come into the city and where they're going to be directed. And until that small, tiny little piece of the budget gets resolved, then I'm not prepared to vote for the budget. So that's why I'm, I'm talking about it now so that we have an opportunity to take a look at that. It's a simple one page or page and a half. It's not a big deal policy, mm -hmm. but I would like to see it um, and have counsel. I don't like looking at policies on the night that they're supposed to be um, approved, which would be the night of the budget. Well, and I've always provided those yeah. policies and things in advance to get the opportunity to look at some of those things. So we would de we would definitely do that. And I think we've already discussed what we wanted to have within mm -hmm. that policy so everybody's fully aware of why we're doing those things. Okay, thank you. Anyone else with anything on the budget this evening? All right. We will open the floor for our second public comment this evening. Please remember to state your name and address. Okay, we will close the floor for public comment and move on to the city manager's report with city manager Zelnick. As I just mentioned, we have the water sewer tap use policy as well as discussion regarding unsolicited material ordinance, as well as the SRO agreement with the South Line Schools coming to an upcoming meeting. At our next meeting, I believe we're going to be having the Historical Society present their future plans for the historical village in McCaddy Park. We have the 2022-23 budget meetings. Our next scheduled uh, review of that particular budget or for adoption is actually going to be at the May 24th City Council meeting. I'm still waiting to receive information regarding the drainage study. We have a meeting that's going to be scheduled for next week. We're going to be going over some of the written summaries, and I'll be providing that information to Council at a later date. I also brought up to Council regarding the DPW paving project. We had the pre-construction meeting for the paving project. The first, the first phase of the project was actually the storm sewer improvements, and then this is the first uh, section of the actual paving. It's scheduled to begin in mid-May and will be completed before the end of June. And that's all I have for council. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. That's remarkable. Um, I just wanted to point out that we had the uh, the clean or the trash bash on Wednesday, and it, the objective was to end up trying to get the the downtown all picked up. There's litter all over the place and cans and things of that nature. After I'd uh, gone home, I, had a, I sent uh, the city manager an email asking that we get the street sweeper to go and take care of the, all the rocks and things that were in the curb pans. Uh, the downtown is a very small 
footprint and uh, the response was the street sweeping picks up in the spring. They do not sweep in the winter during the time there's salt on the roads or during freezing temperatures due to the potential damage it can cause to the equipment. But they do run on a regular basis, but it's scheduled based on department demands. I'm just thinking that would have taken 20 minutes, a half hour, to end up getting through the, the main streets of the downtown when the objective was to try to dial up the downtown so when people are coming in, it doesn't look terrible. I just thought that that, that response was bizarre. I just needed to bring that up to you. Well, I'm sorry you feel it was bizarre. There was a little bit more to your question that you actually had asked, but I had spoken well, with the- Well, there were two other issues, yeah. Yeah, okay. There were some other issues, and I spoke with the DPW supervisor and talked with him regarding that, and he did discuss with me the need, so when somebody says, how could it may not be running? So I was trying to answer a general question regarding that. Not that it did just occur the day after or immediately beyond that. I was just trying to give you a full scope on when the street sweeper is being done. So I was trying to give you a full picture on when things, because we get asked all the time, how come the street sweeper is not running in the winter months? It's because you do that, you put salt inside the equipment and the equipment has to be cleaned out completely or else it'll erode the, uh, the other equipment that's not stainless steel inside there. So I was trying to do, I was trying to mention that. So when there is frozen that debris- That said, but it makes sense. When there is frozen debris within the curb and gutter, they, do nef they definitely do not do that. They usually street sweep the streets after a rain or when there's water on the ground because it does pick it up better. If you don't do that, all it does is create a dust bowl. So Jeff, in fact, is scheduling it, and he did put that on to be cleaned. I don't know what the exact date or when he did it or when he was planning on doing it, but I was just trying to answer a general question because there was more to your question. I was just trying to give you a response. I'm sorry, sorry you feel it was a bizarre answer. I was just trying to be detailed as much as I could within your email. That's, that's I guess the, the thing that drove me kind of crazy about the whole thing was last year we had that event on... Uh, at the farmer's market parking. Um, was it food food trucks? Yeah. yeah. Um, and there was literal gravel through the downtown on the, on the curbs. I'm thinking we need to be much better at looking forward and getting things prepped so that when we have an event that we present ourselves in the best light. When you know that there's going to be a flow of traffic, foot traffic in particular downtown, we need to dress the place up and it only comes by getting stuff like mud and garbage out of the curb pan. There's nothing that to tell that you're not taking care of stuff like that is. So, that, and I, I don't want to end up going haywire about this. It's just, a, these, this is like 101 stuff. So I'm hoping we, we end up improving that. You else have anything for the city manager tonight? All right, we'll move on to council comments this evening. <clears throat> Councilmember Kivel, we'll kick it off with you. All right. Um, well, obviously the the uh, <laughs> that trash bash was a, a nice event. Uh, dialed up the place. There was a great deal of stuff going on. Um, Another thing that uh, that was revealed was the 110 Detroit Street had an alarming amount of liquor bottles and things in that backyard. Um, so obviously, when you don't walk into the yard, you're not really seeing some of the the downside of having a building that's uh, that's been idle for that long because there was tons of mischief going on over there. But between that and the uh, Yerkes cleanup on Sunday, we couldn't have had better weather. I got sunburned pretty good, and uh, but it was really nice being outside, and it was, as Larry had mentioned, it is improving. Last year's take out of the section that we had worked on from, uh, from the uh, Hungry Howies into the cemetery, we probably got half of what we had the prior year. So I think that it really does have some long, long time results to get stuff that's, uh, you know, that's just simply not going to break down, get it out of the yard. 
So, um, I guess uh, the only other issue I had was um, I wanted to bring up the idea that we ended up canceling the last, the first meeting of the month. And quite honestly, I don't understand that. In the, the event that there was a building problem, um, uh, something, something consequential should have taken place for us to not have this building open, conducting the business of the city. I just don't get it. Um, people, people lost two weeks worth of being able to see the minutes and the bills that had been approved today. Uh, there, there were department heads that had, you know, the ability to speak to what was going on in their departments that people would have been able to ask questions about if they had an interest in something. Uh, it's, it's not simply, uh, I, I don't know, it, it just seems like it dismisses how important these meetings are to simply let it go we'll catch up later. So I'm hoping like crazy, and that's, that is the first time that's ever happened with me being in this uh, on city council without something that forced us to not have a meeting. So I, I sure hope that doesn't happen again. That's all I have, thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Kibble. Councilmember Mosier. I'm good, I don't have anything to say. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Councilmember Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just uh, following up uh, on Councilmember Kibble's uh, comment, uh, I want to thank Emily Gray, who organized uh, last week's uh, downtown trash bash, and all the volunteers who turned out to help. Everyone's efforts certainly made a, a big difference in the downtown area. Uh, next, I want to thank uh, Larry Ledbetter and Susan Martin for another successful South Lion Creek cleanup event on Sunday. Also want to thank all the volunteers who turned out to help with that as well. It looked like we pretty well filled the dumpster by the end of the event, and according to uh, Larry, I think we got three quarters full on that one, so that's pretty good. I uh, just want to remind the residents about the uh, citywide garage sale that's taking place Thursday through Sunday this week. So clean out your closets, garage, and basement, and let's sell those treasures. Don't forget the ladies' night out shopping event in downtown that's scheduled for Friday, May 6th from 5 to 9 p.m. And finally, on Saturday, May 14th, the City of South Lyon and the Salem South Lyon District Library will be holding a document shredding event in the library parking lot from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So get rid of all those unneeded documents in a secure and environmentally friendly way. Winter's over and the events are coming back to the City of South Lyon. That's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Kennedy. Councilmember Kurtzwell. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank DPW for cleaning up Paul Baker Park uh, just in time for a first cut of the grass and plants to follow in the next few weeks. There was a lot of cleaning up that needed to be done, and I want to thank you so much for going down there and, and getting it done. So thank you to all of the guys over there in DPW. Next, I'd like to announce that the South Lane Cultural Arts Commission has a garden party coming this Thursday. It's going to be at 8 o'clock, and it's going to be over at 3rd Monk Brewery. It's going to be a poetry reading. This is probably one of the highest attended events that the Cultural Arts Commission does is because we in the area don't really have a lot of opportunities for listening to poetry, meeting the poets, and it's just just a great evening. So if you have a moment, stop by Third Monk Brewery and enjoy some good um, poetry reading. Next, beginning on May 9th until June 9th, the Cultural Arts Commission will be featuring local artists from South Lyon High School and South Lyon East. Yes, these are incredible artists that are at the high school level and they are performing as if they were seasoned artists. And when they're going to be having their art displayed in freestanding uh, frames in South Lyons uh, downtown area, including Paul Baker Park. I have seen the poster of all the artwork and the poster says you need to get the full picture. I have not seen the full pieces of artwork, but I have seen the pictures, and they're incredible. So please give these young artists an opportunity um, for a little bit of fame. Go through town, get your picture taken with some of the artwork, because it's going to be downtown and displayed. 
uh, last, I do want to thank the mayor and uh, uh, the city manager for uh, balancing the needs of uh, the public to come to a, a public meeting and the wear and tear that we sometimes put on our employees here in the city. I want to thank you for canceling the meeting. Uh, I think it was very well received, maybe not by everybody, but I think the issue here is not what you can sit at a city council meeting and talk about in your council comments. It's not about your narrative that's important to the public. I think what's important to the public is that they have the confidence that they have a team here in, in City Hall that is managing the employees. We put the employees through an extremely difficult time in December when we were dealing with the SRO officer contract. The time and energy that everybody put in on that was very, very time consuming. And then in January, we moved into working on the bond issue. That has also been time consuming along with the budget. And in these meetings, we are asking our department heads to be here after five o'clock. So that means if a meeting doesn't start till six, they hang around until six. If a city council meeting doesn't start till 7.30, they hang around until 7.30. And I think that when you are in management, you have to step aside, like, like I do most of the time. <laughs> I don't like to micromanage, because that's not my job. I have to trust in the people that are making the decisions. And I think the decision to cancel that meeting was very well uh, done, because we had so much that we were asking our employees to be here after 5 o'clock. So thank you, the two of you, for thinking about our employees. That's far more important than what anybody has to say at the city council meeting, I can assure you. Because it's the city council employees, I mean it's the city employees. that are probably the biggest asset that we have in the city. It's not anything else, it's the city employees, and don't ever forget that. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hey, Councilman Pitzer, Councilmember Hanson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as a father of two young daughters, uh, one of which is set to start at ECC, which is right across the parking lot from uh, Bartlett next fall. Um, it's concerning and distressing to hear some of the comments that were made during public comment regarding some of the traffic situations, crosswalk situations, et cetera. So I'm hoping that the lieutenant can take the, the comments uh, back to the chief and work with the uh, police department to improve upon um, uh, some of the uh, dismissing the students and, and making sure that um, our kids are safe. Um, and I'll definitely be interested to hear if those sorts of um, dismissals and, and start of the day uh, for, the, for the kids improves, especially not only on Haggard Arm, but the surrounding streets. Um, on a lighter note, um, the creek cleanup was a great success on Sunday. I didn't fall in. The waiters worked. <laughs> And uh, we definitely uh, picked up quite a bit of trash. A grill, um, several tires. I ran out of count of how many plastic bags we, we fished out of there. We even found a safe and had the, uh, the uh, South Live Police Department actually come and pick it up, because who knows where it came from. Um, so it was great success, and it was great to see the number of volunteers that we had. Um, as far as upcoming events, um, one that sticks in my mind is this Friday. Um, we are, uh, for Arbor Day, we are going to be planting a tree at Volunteer Park at one o'clock. I uh, hope to see a lot of you there. Um, I, I think Mr. Kennedy is even gonna be uh, uh, digging the hole with a shovel, so if he needs extra help, I'll be, I'll be there with gloves and a, and a shovel <laughs> myself, so. Um, that's a one o'clock volunteer park. Not sure whereabouts uh, if the tree location has been decided upon, but um, you know, hopefully we'll find a good spot and hope to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Hanson. Councilmember Dill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanted to first thank uh, Corey Frost uh, and Tracy Smith for volunteering for um, well for the Planning Commission and the DDA. Uh, it's very important to get residents involved in, on these commissions and boards. So I really appreciate the time that people take to um, make themselves available for that. Um, the city can't function without those, and uh, so I'm really pleased to hear that we're getting more involvement. Um, I also wanted to thank our residents who, who do come here and um, speak up at, um, at public comment. I know sometimes it's not easy and it's frustrating because we can't have an ongoing dialogue. 
Um, but I want you to know that we do hear you. These are issues that are concerns for us. We've talked about them. Um, in fact, we just talked at our last meeting, I think, about both of those. Um, so it, we, we are working on, um, you know, we'll make sure that they, you know, things get addressed and we uh, have some resolution for those. Um, I also want to thank and I apologize once again that I was not available for the crate cleanup, but I promise I will be next time. It's not here. Um, but I would thank everybody for doing that. It's, it's not a uh, glamorous job, but I'm really pleased that there was uh, good uh, weather this time. Um, and then I also wanted to mention, I just lost it on my phone, I had it, um, that there is a food truck, truck frenzy at the uh, South Lion East for the band boosters um, on May 17th. So um, they are really hoping to get a lot of people out there. There's going to be a ton, of, uh, a ton of food trucks, and they're really hoping that um, they get a good turnout so that they can uh, raise some money for the band there. And I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Dill. <clears throat> um, in regards to the Hagedorn issue, it's something that has to be discussed with our law enforcement and our school district. Um, I'd love to tell you that's the only issue that we have with that, but if any of you have ventured out towards Green Oak Way when Brummer Elementary is releasing. I've had people from Green Oak email me because um, when you're the mayor of South Lyon, some people with knowing they have a South Lyon mailing address, you are their mayor as well. <laughs> and that's fine. Um, it is a problem. I wish I had an answer to fix it. Um, but I know when you surround yourself with people like uh, Chief Sovic and Lieutenant Baki and the staff over at the South Lyon Community School District, uh, hopefully we can figure out a way to remedy the situation. Um, secondly, uh, the conditions of the streets are hopefully going to be addressed in August. Um, you know, things probably don't move at the speed that people would like at this level or mm -hmm. levels above this. Um, but we have a responsibility, and sometimes, um, you know, you bump into a hundred year pandemic and some other issues, and some things might end up on the side table for a little bit, but it is a priority, um, and I will be doing everything I can to get the news out about the streets issue in August. So um, I will not be looking for a motion to adjourn tonight. We'll be looking for a motion to go into closed session this evening. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Kurtzwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at this time, I'd like to move to go into a closed session to consult with our city attorney regarding trial or settlement strategy in connection with City of South Lyon versus Tammy Acosta, Oakland County Circuit Court, case number 2021-190646-CZ in accordance with MCL 15.268-1E. No second. Thank you, and I know our city attorney would appreciate it if we could get a roll call vote on that city clerk Deaton case. Dilg? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Kibble? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Ozer? Yes. Kurtzweil? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.